In the previous video, I introduced you to the equations that we can use to solve problems involving free-falling projectiles moving in two dimensions. These are the equations here. They connect the position and velocity of the projectile at an earlier time to the position and velocity of the projectile at a later time. Because we are in two dimensions, for each time we have two variables for position, x and y, and two variables for velocity, vx and vy. So these are the equations here. In the x direction, we have the equations of constant velocity motion. And in the y direction, we have the equations of constant acceleration motion. So here's the example we're going to do. We have a cliff 80 meters tall. A cannonball is launched horizontally from the top of the cliff and then traces out a trajectory and hits the ground over here. We would like to find the total time in motion for the cannonball. We would like to find how far from the base of the cliff does the cannonball land and what are the X and Y components of the velocity just before landing. So this problem, like pretty much all of the previous example problems involving kinematics, will be solved using this handout. Okay, so the first step is to draw a clear sketch illustrating the problem. There we go. Step two, draw a coordinate system. So in this example, our coordinate system is going to have X and Y axes. And you can see that if I put the origin here, I'll just go ahead and draw that in. They put the origin here, y-axis pointing up. x-axis pointing to the right. And you can see with this choice of the axes, all of the action takes place in the first quadrant. So our x-coordinates are all going to be positive or zero. Our y-coordinates will all be positive or zero, which keeps things a little nicer. Step three, identify and number the moments of interest. In this problem, there are just two moments of interest. So moment of interest zero would be just after the launch. Remember, we don't put the moment of interest during the launch. We want to restrict ourselves to the part of the process, which is free fall motion. The cannonball is not free falling while it is being launched. It is free falling immediately after and from there until right before it hits the ground. So moment zero will be right after the launch, and moment one will be just before the cannonball hits the ground. Okay, now at each moment of interest, write down the appropriate kinematic variables. This is a constant acceleration problem. So as we did in the previous constant acceleration problems, we will write down symbols to denote time, position, and velocity. Although in this case, we're going to need two variables to describe position and two variables to describe velocity. So I'm going to start by just putting in, actually, I can put all of the kinematic variables for moment zero here. So we'll have time zero, x zero, y zero, vx zero, vy zero. And then at moment one, time one, x one, y one, b x one, b y one. Before we go to step five, let's put in the acceleration. As with other problems involving free falling projectiles, we have that our x acceleration is zero. And our y acceleration is minus 9.8 meters per second squared. Okay, anyways, going on to step five, for those kinematic variables whose values are known, write the values of the kinematic variables on the diagram next to the variables. So why don't you pause the video here? And uh, for those quantities where we already know these values without doing any computation, fill them in and then rejoin the video. Okay, let's say that time zero is zero. Now we have launched the projectile from 
x0 equals 0 and y0 equals 80 meters. The projectile was launched horizontally. So initially, the y velocity is 0, and the x velocity is what it tells us, 30 meters per second. Now, for moment one, we don't know the time. We don't know the x coordinate. We know that the y coordinate is zero. We also know that the x velocity is constant. The acceleration is only in the y direction. So if vx zero is 30 meters per second, then vx one also 30 meters per second, and vy one we're going to have to figure out later. <clears throat> okay. Part A, let's find the time in motion. In other words, we are looking for time one here. Okay, so why don't you try going through the list of equations and see if you can find an equation where the only unknown is time one. And if you find that equation, see if you can work out time one on your own and then rejoin the video. So the equation here that allows us to solve for time one in a single step is equation four. So everything in equation four is known except for time one. So to see that, let me take equation four and write it out over here. So we have y1 equals y0 plus vy0 delta t plus one half a y delta t squared, y1 is 0, uy0 is 0. So let's look at what we have left over. We have 0 equals y0 plus 1 half a y. Now let me expand out that delta t. That delta t is t1 minus t0. That is squared. But t0 is 0. Okay, so what's actually left? We have zero equals y zero plus one half a y t one squared. All right, let's solve for t one. Uh, take y zero, put it on the other side. The minus sign. Divide through by a y over two. That's equal to t one squared. So we're going to Take the square root and flip sides. That gives us t1 equals square root of minus 2y0. I move 2 into the numerator there over a y. All of that's square root. Now making the substitution along with units, we have minus 2 80 meters. a y is minus 9.8 meters per second squared. The numerical value I get here is 4.04. .04. Now let's check the units. So meters cancels meters. Now notice that we have inside the parentheses one over second squared. Now that's gonna flip up into the numerator so that we have second squared, but then we're taking the square root of that. So the unit is seconds. Okay, so this is the answer to the first part of the problem. The time in motion is 4.04 .04 seconds. <clears throat> Let's go on to part B. How far from the cliff does the cannonball land? In other words, in part B, we are looking for x1. Uh, I'm going to fill in time one first. In other words, in part B, we are looking for x1. So see if you can scan the list of equations and find an equation where the only unknown is x1 and everything else is known. If you look at the list of equations here, the only one that has x1 in it is 2, so I guess we better hope that that works. So let's try that now. Uh, x1 equals x0 plus vx0. I'll expand the delta t as t1 minus t0. And everything here is known. X0 is 0. T0 is 0. So let's just put in the other two things. 
we have x1 is vx0, 30 meters per second, and then time one, 4.04 .04 seconds. So do the multiplication. I got 121 meters. Okay, part C. What are the X and Y components of the velocity before landing? So the X component of the velocity right before landing is 30 meters per second. I folded the paper in a way that hides that, but it's 30 meters per second. We saw that earlier. Now we have to find the Y component of the velocity just before landing. Go through the list of equations that has VY1 in it, but everything else is known. Try that on your own and then rejoin the video. The easiest way to do this, I think, is to use equation three. So let me take equation three, copy it over here. We then have VY1 equals VY0 plus AY delta T. VY0, ah, zero, AY minus 9.8 meters per second squared. Delta T would be T1 minus T0, which is 4.04 .04 seconds. And we get VY1 equals minus 39.6 meters per second. And there we have completed our first example problem involving a free-falling projectile moving in two dimensions.